every executive and business owner is negotiating everything all day long. You know, in my world, I'm negotiating employment contracts and separation agreements for senior executives. So, you know, that's just a part of every executive's life is how do they get to the company and you know, what do they, you know, even at the very moment of beginning their term as an executive, they're negotiating what the terms are of their employment. And at the end, right, they're negotiating their exit and their way out. In the middle, they're negotiating with employees, they're negotiating with their insurance company, they're negotiating with their money managers, they're negotiating with their banks for loans. There's nothing that they do that doesn't involve some kind of negotiation, even negotiating with their assistant to maybe get them a cup of coffee with a smile. So I think that the negotiating skills are important in ways other than simply transactional negotiation. Right? You're always needing to negotiate relationships and the extent of expectations of your partners. So it is a skill which, when honed, serves you in all areas of your life. would like to start with a gender pitfall, all right? Being a woman, right? A lot of women come to me and they say, I don't like negotiating, Laurel. And I say, you have no choice. And so what is it that you don't like to negotiate? Well, the fact is that women don't like confrontation. We're relationship builders. We're, you know, we're known to like um, to build friendships, but not to enter into disagreements. And negotiation, it's all about disagreements. We're not in a negotiating table if we agree on something. So women have to get past the initial confrontation, the feeling that they are talking to somebody who's not on the same page. Men, on the other hand, um, they don't like to prepare. They feel that they can shoot from the hip. And negotiation, it can be, if it's successful, an extremely complex game, so to speak. And so men are not reticent to be in competition, not reticent to enter into a disagreement and then slap each other on the back and go forward. But because of that, they don't feel the need to prepare. Women, on the other hand, might have a little advantage. That fear, that fear of confrontation, that keeps them prepared. So they're a little more willing to enter into the discipline that comes with successful negotiation. If you've got a lawyer who is not just a good negotiator, but is a good deal person, a strategist, a business strategist, not focusing on the legal complexities of the deal, but focusing on helping you make the best deal for you, focusing on how to get the deal done, focusing on compromises that would work or alternatives or options that would make the deal work. That's the lawyer you want at the table early. If you're going to just use your lawyer to dot the I's and cross the T's, first of all, I would say you have the wrong lawyer. All right, But if that's what you want to use a lawyer for, then you don't need them at the negotiating table. Negotiate your business terms as best you can. You know what you want for your own business, what your needs are. Negotiate it, and then give it to the lawyer to just complete the business terms. I like my clients to come to me as early as possible because there are a lot of things that I can share with them about ideas I have about how I've seen these deals work in the past. Let them play around with the various opportunities for a deal and, uh, and let them think about it. Say, say they're thinking about just a very simple partnership. Let them think about what the expectations are in a partnership. They just think that a partnership means maybe sharing some office space, sharing expenses, sharing liabilities, we're done. All right? They don't realize that this is a marriage right? and that this marriage um, might be good right now, but things happen. People get sick, people die, all right? people are unable to comply with the expectations of the other side. The money guy puts in the money, and at this moment, that money is gratefully received in return for that active participant, right, who knows they're going to do all the work. Five years later, the money guy hasn't done anything at all, but that was the deal, right? The active participant is getting tired of being the only one working. Right? So those are things that, you know, need to be addressed at the onset. A good lawyer who's been through those deals before will maybe have a checklist of experiences that they can share with their client to make sure that's what they're thinking about doing um, even before they start down the path of negotiating the business terms. So I say get a good lawyer, all right, and bring them in early. Mm -hmm.